Hi, my name is Tony Phillips. I'm the historian for the Mendocino Coast Model Railway and Historical Society. Okay. Over to my left is our new layout building. Inside the building are scenes from the 10 mile branch belonging to the Union Lumber Company's railroad. In 1895, when C.R. Johnson started up Union Lumber Company, he bought the land that I'm standing on, and which is about two miles long and about a mile wide. And over behind our cameraman is where the Union Lumber Company mill used to exist. The Union Lumber Company mill would handle 15-foot uh, logs and the original timber lands owned by the Union Lumber Company were in Pudding Creek and ultimately when they carved the tunnel through to the Noyo River extended into the Noyo River Basin. Even extending into the Noyo River Basin did not provide enough wood, enough logs for the mill. The mill needed about 80 freight cars of lumber cut logs a day in order to maintain its production. Eight years ago, I was given this plan. The plan is the origin, it's a copy of the original blueprint, literally the original blueprint that the surveyor created to plan and lay out and ultimately to build the 10 mile branch. We're standing in the middle of the Y at the uh, skunk yard. A Y is where they can turn the trains around and if you look behind me you can see the tracks of the Y going up towards uh, Noyo River. The 10 mile uh, branch was conceived in 1913 and built in 1914 and opened for business in 1915. And what we're going to try and do today is to see what's left of the 10 mile branch that you could enjoy if you came here to Fort Bragg. We're now standing by Pudding Creek. Behind me you can see the Pudding Creek trestle. Our surveyor's plan shows us that the Pudding Creek trestle was by far the largest of the five trestles that were needed to be built in order to bring the lumber from the 10 mile basin to the big mill downtown Fort Bragg. If you look very carefully at the trestle behind me, you'll see that it, in fact it is not flat. It runs from the south to the north uphill at the rate of about two degrees. This two degrees incline is about the maximum you can possibly have with a fully loaded steam engine and between 500 and 1,000 tons of logs up back. There are no pictures of any steam engine halted on the Pudding Creek trestle. The reason is, if you were stopped, you had to, to basically roll backwards and start all over again. From the top of the grade, just over here, downtown was slightly downhill. And you can still walk along the top of the Pudding Creek trestle and back to downtown and all the way to McCarrica along what was the bed of the railroad. The railroad existed from 1915 until 1948 when the road was torn up, when the railroad was torn up and turned into a logging road. The reason for it being made into a logging road was that the, the, the log carriers were 10 feet across, 10 feet, huge, and they would carry over 250,000 pounds of logs at any one time. If you look on your screen now, you can see the model that we have made of the Pudding Creek trestle. Ours, like the one here, has a very slight grade to it from, from uh, north to south and it looks exactly the same in the picture. In fact, it is not the same. When the Pudding Creek trestle was originally built, there were five uprights. That was all that was needed when it was a, a railroad because the weight was spread out. The, lo the lorries, the trucks that carried the lumber were so huge they had to reinforce the, the trestle in order to carry the load of, of the trucks. And a sixth piece of wood was added on the seaside to brace it to make sure that nothing came adrift. If you follow Creek, Pudding Creek behind our cameraman, you arrive at a, a, what was once the log pond of the original Pudding Creek and uh, 
navigation company. Today it is the source of water for Fort Bragg. We are not going to visit all of the five trestles. We are going to miss out the next trestle, which you can see on our screen, which was at Virgin Creek. The Virgin Creek trestle, we believe, was washed out around 1948 or 1952 in two huge storms. And the picture you see on the screen is the only one we have of it. If you go there today, there is nothing to be seen apart from a tiny trickle of water. And it seems quite inconceivable now that it needed a trestle to, to go over it. But there was a trestle there. So we are going to McCarricka Park where we can still see the remains of the railroad bed and we can also see remnants of the huge, long but low trestle that existed at McCarricka. According to our surveyor's plan, we're now approximately halfway between downtown Fort Bragg where the Union Lumber Company mill was and Ten Mile River itself. If you look behind me, over towards where that ridge is, that's where Ten Mile River goes out to the sea. We're actually standing on the westernmost edge of McCarricka State Park. In 1915, when the railroad was built from downtown Fort Bragg to Ten Mile, McCarricka State Park did not exist. This place was known as Laguna Point, and there was a very small community here. If you look on your screen now, you'll see the one photograph that we have of the McCarricka Trestle. It is very long, approximately 700 feet, but very low. At, at its highest point, it was about 20 feet high. The trestle was very kind to the environment. The sea washed around the base of the trestle, and the pond, which is now over here, inside McCarricka State Park, in fact was tidal, with all the advantages of a tidal uh, place for fish to uh, uh, breed and lots of bird life. When the trestle started to deteriorate, they reinforced it with those stakes of iron, which you can see along there, and it gives you the idea of the line of the railroad at that particular point in time. When in 1948 it was decided that the railroad should become a regular haul road, the berm, which you can see to the right of the stakes, was put in place. The berm cut off the pond in McCarricka Park, Park and it no longer ceased to be tidal and has since become quite brackish. The, the surveyor's plan shows that there are two more trestles between here and Ten Mile. Unfortunately, nothing of them exists. The first one was at Sand Hills. As you traverse Route 1 towards Ten Mile, you come round a corner and if you look to your left, you'll see a sand hill well over a hundred feet high of sand that was put there by the wind and waves over hundreds upon hundreds of years. The trestle there was as much to uh, keep the sand back as it was to uh, cause, help the roadway. The last trestle before Ten Mile was at Inglenook Creek. There is a pond there which is kind of interesting. It has all sorts of life in it which only exists in that pond and also in Alaska and nobody knows why. The Inglenook uh, trestle was washed out by El Nino and if you go down after a really severe storm you can still see remnants of the trestle. Not a lot of it but just enough to tell you where in fact the railroad actually went. Our surveyor's map tells us that we in fact have arrived. We're now at Ten Mile River. If you look over my shoulder, you can see the river going out to the sea. Quite often, for most of the year, it is in fact dammed, but for a couple of months each year, it is in fact open. It's very shallow, so it was never any good for bringing logs from the uh, Ten Mile Basin to uh, this part of the world. All the transportation was done by a railroad. If you look behind me to my left, you can see the path. The path is in fact the railroad track. And if you look at the picture on your screen, which was taken by the Coastal Conservancy from an aircraft probably about 500 feet um, high, 
you can clearly see the incredible curve that was made by the railroad to come from along the coast round up the path that you see here underneath the railroad bridge and straight up river up river about a mile was camp one camp one was the staging area for the 42 camps that ultimately existed between here and uh, Laytonville on route 101 every day for about 60 car loads of lumber came down this railroad and into uh, Fort into Fort Bragg to the lumber mill. The bridge that we have today is the fifth. If you look on the screen you can see the first of the five bridges made entirely of redwood. It was a huge improvement over the ford that in fact existed just a little bit up the river and that was the way that the stagecoach had to go in order to get to Rockport and Westport. The picture you now see on your screen is rather interesting. If you look closely you can see there are a lot of people peering over the edge of the bridge. What were they doing? This was the site of the annual swim meet of Fort Bragg. And I am told if you look closely into the photograph you'll see that there's a disproportionate young number of young ladies versus gentlemen and older ladies. The reason I am told is that one of the contestants in order to swim faster swam in the nude and he was male. Whether that is a true story or apocryphal I cannot tell you. The other interesting part about this particular part of the world, Fort Bragg had a hermit. He existed for quite some years and lived just up the road, as it were, from this bridge. He was very well educated, wrote a column in the uh, local newspaper, but he lived right here. Ten Mile w was famous too in the Depression. The Union Lumber Company staged what they called a freedom train. They loaded up a huge train with logs and then they had a professional photographer stand on top of the, the, the sand hills here and look down into the curve as the train was coming around it. You can see the photograph on your screen now. It was an amazing picture and did a lot to galvanize sales of redwood in the east which were so vitally important to the Union Lumber Company and the other lumber companies along this part of the world. 